they have to win. There is no other option for them tonight. They don't have the uh, what happened to Argentina who have been given a second chance. But Germany have to win against Sweden because Mexico have got six points. So more or less they are through. That means Sweden with three points could be in pole position even with a draw. Germany, South Korea out. Germany have no points. They have to get those three points to come back into reckoning in this World Cup. Matty Holland, who would have thought going into the second round of fixtures <laughs> in the group phases that Germany would be battling for survival? Nobody. I don't think anybody, especially after last year's Confederation Cup performance. You know how well they did, although it was different players. You know, they were that confident, I think, of coming into this with a, a flexibility in the squad and players, one or two to drop into the existing ones. I don't think anybody expected it. Yes, and uh, what we can tell you right now is we've got the lineups uh, which have come in and uh, Germany have made four changes. Yes, four changes. We'll have those lineups on our screen at the moment. There they are. Manoloya starts in goal, Kimmich starts. Rudiger comes in for Hummels, who is injured. Hector comes in, he didn't play the last game, big change, no Sami Khadira, Rudy comes in there, the Bayern Munich player. Uh, Muller starts, Royas comes in for Mesut Ozil, Draxler starts from the last game, Timo Werner up top on his own. Has he panicked or do you think that Joachim Lowe had no options but to change the lineup, considering how Germany were opened up by Mexico? I don't think Germans panic really a lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think he's made a decision to change players. We half expected Jonas Hector to play anyway in the first game. He didn't. Um, you know, Sebastian Rudi is an interesting choice. I would have personally gone with Gundogan, but looking at uh, Jupp Heynckes, his former coach at Bayern before Ancelotti, he liked he liked Rudi a lot. He gave him a lot of good. Uh, positive comments about his quality on the ball and his vision. So it'll be interesting to see how he does alongside Tony Cruz. Yes, and it's important for them to start well because they know what's, what the template is going to be. They know that Sweden are going to sit back. They know that Sweden will sit back, invite the pressure and they have to find a way through. And this is where you are actually going to be see if the Germans are worthy of that mantle of world champions because a true test of character. We've seen some champions like Argentina 1990 bounce back after an opening reversal. But we've had Italy in 2010 crash out. We've had Spain crash out as well. Yeah, I, I, the game is going to be certainly very, very tight. I would like to think and I feel that Germany will win, but I won't be overly surprised if it's a draw. Mm. Um, a draw won't help them. No, no, of course it won't. But I... You know, Sweden, I don't think we can underestimate them. Um, you know, they, they had a fantastic result to, to, to keep Italy out and to go through. You know, they have got quality. They don't have sort of star players like his Latans and Henrik Larsson's quite so much anymore. Um, but still, they are very well organised. They are a, fit, a physically good team. I mean, uh, I was at a conference a few, few months back with uh, the head of conditioning. Paul Balsam was actually at Leicester City also and I listened to him about this qualification. It was very interesting. So I think it'd be tough for Germany also. Germany are known to be ruthless. They're known to be efficient. Yogi Lowe, when he came on, added flair. But importantly, the communication was missing. Do you think with the changes he's made now, that that area will be addressed, that the central defenders will not be left exposed in two versus two situations? Well, you know, at this level, it's obviously important that that communication aspect is there, but also what's really important is the non-verbal communication, the football intelligence and the understanding. Now that's usually very, very good with Germany. Potentially, I think what happened in the first game is that there was a little bit of that missing, that non-verbal. Do you think they were overconfident? I looked at them and thought they were overconfident, thinking that come what may, we're going to get the result, we're going to get the win. Yeah, I, 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 I can't argue with that. You know, they are that good individually and as a unit and have been very successful the past few years. You know, especially winning the tournament last time out. You know, I think they went into the game thinking they can play and it will come in the end. But of course, you know, Mexico threw a shock to all of us. What do they do today? Show it to us on our board. Do they look at the game which, uh, which Brazil have had against uh, the, the last one against Costa Rica, knowing that the team are going to sit back? So that means a lot of patience required. A lot of uh, patience and the ability to just wait for their moment. Because we saw with Brazil, good teams find a way of, uh, of going through. Well, looking at Sweden here on the right-hand side, they're going to play a 4-4-2. I'm not saying that they'll defend very, very deep, but I do think they'll have more or less 
10 men plus the goalkeeper behind the ball as much as they can to keep compact. If, for example, I've highlighted your Krush and Rudy, if they play between each other in front of the forwards, they're going to have a problem. So what I believe needs to happen is I'll just forward it here. Sorry, I'll go back to preset three. What needs to happen is that actually the back four of Germany, they are the guys that need to be playing with the ball. And Krush and Rudy need to be behind the forwards to be able to suck out the Swedish midfield. That's where the rotation will come in. If they can get beyond the midfield at times, the, the two centre mids for Sweden, that'll also open up pockets and angles to play in and to penetrate. Because as soon as these forward passes start coming in here, what happens is that the Swedish midfielders, they get drawn out to the ball and then you have pockets of space. For example, Royce to exploit, for Timo Werner to also exploit. There has been a lot of talk in the build-up to this game, questioning the commitment of the players, questioning their body language, questioning their desire, questioning the players like a Mesut Ozil who's been made sort of a scapegoat as well. They would also be aware of the curse of the champions. I was reading Cesc Fabregas a few days back and he spoke about how the team was completely scared heading into that second match of the 2010 World Cup. That will be the mood. They know the backs are against the wall. But usually with the Germans, you know, that's when they come through. Yeah, I think if you look at, without being too stereotypical also, you know, the Spanish in terms of the way that they are, are very, very different as people to the Germans. You know, Germans are very steely, they're not robotic, because that, that's the wrong way, thing to say. But I mean, they are very determined in the way that they are. The emotion doesn't really get to them too much. So I don't think they'll have a big problem with that. Mm. Um, it will just depend on can they execute it properly and can they, can they raise their performance. Okay, very quickly. Three words, who do you think wins? Germany. Germany. He's saying Germany are going to win. So that's how Matty Holland thinks uh, Germany will fare. Everyone's saying Germany, but then this is the World Cup of upsets. There's one last day of action to negotiate before we begin a frenetic finale to the group stages. Now, uh, 1966 champions England will look to emulate Belgium and make it two wins out of two when they take on debutants Panama in Nizhny Novgorod. There is also the small matter of Captain Harry Kane wanting to be in the race for the Golden Boot. So expect goals in this one. Then the two unbeaten teams in Group F face each other in Ekaterinburg. Japan and Senegal shock the group favourites in their opening game and a win for either team will more or less assure a spot in the knockouts. The final game on Sunday comes our way from Kazan and sees Colombia and Poland face each other with defeats certain to eliminate the vanquished team. With that, it is time to thank Matt Holland for being the good pundit <laughs> that he always is. That also just about does it from us here on Theatre of Dreams on day 10 of the 2018 FIFA World Cup. But we are closing the show tonight with birthday greetings to an all-time World Cup legend. French midfield maestro Zinedine Zidane contested two World Cup finals and headlined both, even if for reasons pulls apart. But be it for the glorious night in Paris in 1998, or the more infamous evening in Berlin in 2006, Zizou remains etched in footballing folklore. Relive, the, relive those moments as Zidane turns 46. We're back with Theatre of Dreams at 3.30pm IST or 10am GMT on Sunday.